Okie dokie. Waiting on the link. Maybe it's not for a while. Okay, we are in Bible Story, a volume of nine by author S. Maxwell. It sure is not going to think. Okay. And we are at part one, story eight, scene of the temple. Okay. Um, it happened before, so this is the second time he did it. And um, him overturning the stuff. Um, okay, let me get, let me read the story. Okay, what happened to the procession after that, we are not told. Perhaps at the sight of Jesus' tears, the crowd scattered. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the people said, What a strange sort of king, crying like that in public. Maybe he isn't a king after all. They just didn't understand. Anyway, the darkness, anyways, a darkness fell. They all went home to talk about the strange and wonderful day it had been. The next next morning, Jesus appeared in the temple, and soon things began to happen again. Years before, at the beginning of his ministry, he had driven the merchants and the money changers out of this sacred place. Now he caught sight of them again. They were back in their own their old places busy than ever busy as ever selling some were selling calves some sheep some pigeons though the biggest business at this season of the year was in lambs for the passover meanwhile the money changers were changing greek and roman coins from the uh, from the holy money of the temple at a good profit, of course. In other words, they were changing the Greek and Roman coins into the temple money and then taking a profit off of that. <coughs> okay. With all this buying and selling of animals, the place looked like a market and smelled like a farmyard. To Jesus, it was all wrong. How could people worship God properly with all this business going on? He longed to bear witness against it once more. Advancing upon the money changers, the pigeon sellers, and the rest of the merchants, he called out in a loud voice, Take these things away. It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Seizing the table, uh, a table belonging to one of the money changers, he tipped it over, scattered the silver coins all over the pavement. Then he moved to another and another and did the same. Coming to the seat, coming to the seats of the pigeon sellers. He pushed them over, repeated, uh, uh, repeatedly again and again. Take those things away. My house shall be called a house of prayer. The merchants and the money changers were furious. They remember who Jesus had, how Jesus had done this once before and how, and then it's got, Uh, Rudin, and then of course they got they got showbread too. Because Passover, you had to have the unleavened bread, so they were selling bread too. This is what it looks like. Okay, the mer um, they remember how Jesus had done this once before and how they were had sworn 
vengeance on him if he should ever do this again. But now that he was here, they could do nothing. There was something about the, this man of Nazareth that filled them with fear. They wanted to run from him and hide. Buttering th threats, they knelt and picked up their scattered coins. Then they slunk away to the priest to tell them that they must do something about these Galileans. This Galilean, or he will turn the whole country upside down. <coughs> but the priests were helpless too. They just looked, stood looking on the rising with rising anger as more and more people hearing what Jesus had done flooded fl flocked into the temple to see the great sight men and women boys and girls came hurrying by hundreds all eager for the the new excitement and when the children caught sight of Jesus again they began chanting as they had the day before Hosanna to the son of David. Now above all the shouting and the singing and scoffling, shuffling of many feet, a new sound was heard. It was the happy cry of a blind man whose eyes had been opened by Jesus. Soon there was another shout of praise and another and another as the deaf and the dumb and lame came to thank, uh, thank uh, Lane gave thanks to the great healer. Cripples threw away their crutches and leaping for joy as the power of God had made them suddenly strong again. What a day that was. Never had the temple seen anything like it. Never would it again. You would think that the priests and rulers would have been glad to see so many happy, but they were not. The Bible says that when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he, he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna the son of David, they were sore displeased. Forcing their way through the crowd to where Jesus was standing, they asked, Do you hear what these children are saying? Of course. He had heard them, and he loved, loved them for it. Have you never read? He, a he asked the priest, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast brought Perfect praise. He was quoting from the eighth psalm, which the priests knew very well. It must have made them anger, angerer than ever to have Jesus apply the text to such a moment as this. But Jesus was right. These boys and girls were acting fulfill, fulfilling prophecy. Out of their sweet, loving, innocent hearts, they were giving perfect praise to the Son of David, who was indeed the Son of God. Their happy songs and smiling faces were one of the dearest memories he, <coughs> he carried with him at the cross. And then... It's a uh, Herbert Rudin, and then you got a little boy staring at us to bring us into the the picture. See the little boy right here? He's looking at us to bring us into the picture. <laughs> Interesting stuff that happened. <laughs> that arts too. Okay. And that was part one 
story eight and it's the break and i'll be back in just a second 